Good morning everybody, I'm back and this time I'm going to look at a couple different classes together in one party um, to sort of streamline a few different concepts I wanted to show off. First, I had several people request a sorcerer, um, which is a wizard and a druid. The problem with showing off a class like this is they need another party, to the rest of the party to support them. Um, because there's they're a spellcaster, a pure spellcaster, and it's tough for them to go toe to toe to show off spells and such. So what I'm going to do, and these guys are all out of position as the fight starts because of the way the beta is broken in terms of the custom formations and just not working. Um, well, they work, but then when you re reload your game, and they don't, they don't work anymore. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, to clarify, custom formations work. Even when you reload your game. But if you quit the game and then restart the game, they're back to that straight line again. Uh, let's do this here. Okay. So what I want to do is get everybody in position. And then I want to uh, show off this character first, my sorcerer. Um, I made a nature guy like so that when she gets a few buffs on her, she'll actually regain the lost power levels from being multiclassed. Um, now... Life Giver was requested, and I like the Life Giver. Its boon is that it gives plus one power level to uh, rejuvenation spells, which is great. And they get free reju uh, a free reju rejuvenation spell every power level, which is also great. But um, that's not going to stack with the nature um, godlike. However, I will say this. I do like the idea of this combination anyway because you're not necessarily always going to have a buff on you and when your buff runs out and you want to heal someone having the life giver give plus one um power level without having to have a buff on you is kind of a nice uh lifesaver no pun intended okay so what i did for her spell selection though is i tried to going offense for the evoker half and utility or healing for the life giver half. So like nature's vigor and charm beast. There's not a lot of beasts in the beta, but in the full version of Pillars 1, I loved charm, charm beast. It was a really useful spell. I imagine that'll be the case here as well. Um, for, uh, I, I went with a couple of the, because Wizard has very powerful buffs that cast very, very quickly. So I went with those um, for the Wizard side, along with some evocations. Um, and again, Utility, although in this case uh, it was corrosive damage, which I don't have on the wizard side. So the goal when you're multiclassing two spellcasters, especially when they're so close in terms of like um, roll on the battlefield as a wizard and druid, you could shoot yourself in the foot if you aren't careful and you pick like the same kinds of spells. You're just you're just basically picking um, weaker versions of the same spells you could have had as a single class of either of those classes. Uh, so. I got Rebounding Missiles, Bounding Missiles, and Nature's Bomb, and Purge of Toxins. I don't expect to use this, but I felt better picking it than, like, uh, Lightning. Um, you know, because I, I have Lightning Bolt over here. I don't, but I could have. So, uh, that's the plan for this character. Now, this character was another request. This is a Psyblade that is a fighter, uh, black jacket, and an Ascendant. And the goal... And I kind of messed this up, uh, and we're going to see how it works. The goal is to fire off all of his uh, pistol sets to generate maximum focus, and then start popping off powerful uh, abilities. Um, just dealing... He, well, the initial goal from the, the commenter was to do a bunch of damage, but I actually like to have a couple utility things, like Puppet Master is really, really powerful. And uh, this is like, fun. I never picked this before. It's pretty fast, and it grants strong and insightful... Um, to an ally target for a decent amount of time. So anyway, we'll see how it works. I did grab Discipline Barrage uh, for him. So let's get him all in position. Okay, well the first thing he wanted to do was apparently shoot something. Mine blades. Alright, well it worked alright. Let's actually get him uh, ready with some buffs. Get him with some buffs. Get this guy knocking some guys down and creating a, a wall. Okay. And you guys buff up, put this up. All right, where are you off to? Uh, you are paralyzed. You need to get into the fight because I'm going to lose all my guys otherwise. All right, so now that we've got a fight going, 
let's uh, the moon's light, which is going to rejuvenate at pretty high potency because I'm under the effects of uh, the wellspring of life, plus to all power levels. If I can, if I survive. All right, excellent. All right, gee, where are you going? Stop. I'm turning her AI off. I don't know what she's trying to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. This guy has been shooting. It's really hard to keep up with. Uh, there we go. And let's switch him over to this one. All right, now he's still not at maximum power level. So let's go back to the first weapon set and start shooting this guy. While she is going to get that going. Uh, maybe you should move her here. Take this guy down. Okay, he's still not at maximum. Probably, probably missing a lot. Okay, let's go there. And let's do missiles. All right. Let's take a look at this guy, because it looked like he did hit this guy. Why did he not? Oh, no, I picked this. No, that's right. I did that right. I'm sorry. I messed that up. He's not the other one. He's the Ascendant one. Um, who? No. No, I'm right. I don't. He must just not have done enough damage to ever get to Ascendant. Let's see here. Yeah, no. He did not. That's weird. I'll tell you what. I had a hard time micromanaging all that. Um, I don't know if the black jacket build like that's going to work um, in a in a real situation now that I think about it. Because it was really tough to like try and manage all these guys' stuff. Well, it wasn't impossible. It was fine. Um, here, I'll tell you what. Let's try it again. Now, I, I won't have to spend so much time describing what, I'm, uh, what my goal is here. So, we'll just jump in here. Actually, I can I can probably just uh, uh, let's approach openly, and then inspect. Um, oh, I actually had a request for people. Uh, someone wanted to know about these uh, choose your own adventure type style things. Yep, they're still totally in the game, and they still work pretty much the same as before. Um, in fact, they they have really blown these wide open. There's a lot going on here with these. Um, but in this particular case, I, I could set up an ambush, and that's how I've been getting into most of these fights, uh, stealth and ready to just sort of try one-on-one -on -one combat. But this time, let's just draw the whole thing. Draw the weapon, get in there, and we're going to just fight them all as a group, because I wanted to show off a couple of characters, and I, needed, I wanted my frontline guys to help. Alright, so once again, they're in out of position. Okay. Okay, turn her, oops, turn her off here, go with some buffs, alright, let's, let's watch him, alright, actually let's get this guy going, with watchful presence, let's have this guy, you want to grab someone, that's fine, and have her go here, Looks like she's stuck over there. Okay. Alright, blind him. Let's get zoomed in a little bit so we can see what's going on. Pull this mage in to fight with you in melee. Um, nimble feet. Oh, I already cast that. Let's cast uh, this guy here. Uh, take this guy out. <clears throat> this guy is doing his discipline strikes. Perfect. Now we're going to shoot. All right, excellent. Jeez, what the hell? Um, he did like 63 damage, and then she did a lot with her bounding missile. Um, all right, she she good shape shift, by the way. Oh, let's do this. Let's get her. What does this do? Robust. Oh wow, that's really good. Um, let's put up this uh, over here, and let's have him switch and go this. Excellent. And now switch again. By the way, I didn't pick a fourth weapon sweat set because it's early in the morning and I forgot. Okay, so now we're going to have to just... Uh... Yep, he, he's... No, that actually works great. Uh, the only problem is his 
maximum weapon focus, his we maximum focus begin being an ascendant is higher. So he has like 135 points he gets to. Which is kind of awesome, but it's also a drawback. Uh, just because... Which is awesome, but it's also kind of a drawback. Just because it um, will require him to uh, uh, do a lot more damage to get up there. Uh, so... I don't know, that's not that big a deal, though, really. I mean, honestly, minus one power level is not the big a deal for something like um, this. It'll just make this last a little tiny bit less. Plus 5% less duration. Not that big a deal. Um, this will do a little less damage, though. Just a little bit. Um, but uh, that build, that would probably have worked better if I hadn't messed up and only only picked up... Uh, I, forgot, I forgot to pick up the passive for the plus one weapon set. That's my bad. That probably would have worked... Um, fine we're, we're really fine here's something else to think about too when you've got a hand a party of, of characters that you built by hand and not just like two and like three generic guys that you had nothing to do with when the beta started um it's going to end up being very effective like as a party i think the full version is gonna be full of, of people who've been watching these videos making great characters and building their companions really well and then being like i guess i'm gonna have to play a veteran or higher. Um, all right. Well, I think that's that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do, though, <clears throat> is I wanted to give party XP. I've had a few people ask about power levels and uh, the level cap and things like that with multiclassing. So let me quick level up a guy just to show this off again. So once again, the beta only goes up to tier five. I I call it tier one, two, three, four, five. Um, they're actually power level one, two, three, four, five. Um, and the highest a multi-class character can go, as indicated by these locks down here, is seven. I don't really know what level that is, but I can tell you at level nine, um, which he is, right? Yeah, he's going to be level nine. Yes, level nine. At level nine, you're still only power level three. Maybe maybe at power maybe at character level ten, uh, multi-class guys will hit six, but that won't happen in the beta. So this is the highest you're going to ever get in the beta. And a single-class character at level nine is here, power level five. So that's the difference between multi-classing and and uh, single-class in terms of like how fast they get abilities. And it's I mean it's going to be really great when your when your multi class character can start multi classing and picking great tier five abilities for both of his classes. But you gotta wonder, is that level like thirteen, fourteen? Like that's really far into the game. So keep that in mind. Multi classing sounds awesome and I'm sure it will be awesome throughout the course of the whole game, but it's gonna take a long time to get to the high level stuff for a multi class uh, party. I also wanted to show off camping because um, a few people asked about it, and it's a little bit different than it used to be. It used to be in the first game you could just camp as long as you had, uh, quote, camping supplies. Now, you need to actually have food. And if you've got hardtack, which is super, super cheap, you can just drag this over here. I think you have to, I think you, oh, you don't have to have food, I guess. I thought you had to have some kind of food. Maybe you don't. Oh, that's right. You won't actually heal or remove injuries without food. That's what it is. So if you have some food, and there's no reason to rest without that because all your all your abilities are all per um, you know per fight. So you don't have to rest to get your abilities back, except um, this empower ability once per encounter. You'll gain more of these empower abilities uh, to use before you have to rest. As you level up, you start with one. At level 9, you have two. and level 10, I'm guessing, you get a third one. Um, this lets you recover um, abilities, uh, you know, like your power pool. Uh, for example, this, this single-class character who is level 7 has a power pool of 4, which is 6 points. Because you start with 2, and then every power level you get plus 1 after that. So we started with 2. And then he got, he's at six. Wait, how come he's at, oh, he's at six because he's leveled up. Uh, let's get him leveled up proper. That's fine. Okay, and then whatever, whatever. Eh, doesn't matter anything. I just want to show off power points. Okay. 
Okay. No, he's at seven now. Oh, maybe a start with three. I, I gave you a thing in about three. Uh, no, that's right. Hold on. Two. Yep, you must start with three. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, so you've got... Uh, I've never played... I haven't played a lot of level one characters. Um, so mm -hmm. these points refill when a fight starts, or if you use Empower, you can regain half of them back right in the middle of the fight, which is pretty cool. So um, you can also use the Overpower... Uh, an ability and make it like basically plus 10 power levels, which is going to give it a really big boost to sure. damage, um, bonus, duration, things like that. Um, so you, when you camp, you recover those charges. Plus, you get rid of your injuries, which none of my guys have. Um, that sort of thing. So it's important to rest. And if you just use hard tack, you're good. But there's no bonuses to hard tack. However, you're going to find different types of um, uh, items. And you can buy them from stores, too. And if you use those items when you rest, you'll gain those effects until the next time you rest. Now, uh, it's important to note that um, you have a ship, you have a crew, and you can feed those crew with higher quality foods and giving them bonuses to morale typically look at the ship crew morale is plus one this one's plus zero there's no reason really to use that but hard tack is minus one which i guess there is a reason to use rice wine because it's not hard tack hard tack is really really cheap and it's very easily available you can find it almost anywhere um because it's, it's just um bread uh, that keeps for like a long time it's, yeah served with a glass of salt water to soften it <laughs> So, uh, yeah, hard tech is really easy to get. Um, and then there's going to be some, there's also some really, really high level foods that I've seen, like, uh, in screenshots and stuff. Like, in the full version, I'll have a ton of different foods. And, um, uh, where is it at? Under inventory, I think. No, it's right here. Crafting. You can craft very high quality foods. Look at this. We don't know what some of these stats are, but here's ship crew morale plus 10. Or,. Um, actually, I'm wondering, uh, if these foods, they will almost surely give you boons when you eat them with camping, but they don't show that here, so I don't know what they are, but there's a lot of foods. So that's how camping works and the food system. Um, what else do I want to show off? I think that was everything I wanted to talk about, so if I've missed something, let me know in the comments. Um, sorry for the rough quality of my voice. I had literally just woken up, so that's my bad also. Um, all right, well, I think that'll do it. I won't have much time to record a video tonight. That's why I did one this morning, um, because, um, well, everyone wants me to grill tonight, and uh, I also want to grill tonight, so I'll be doing that. So enjoy your day, uh, and I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks again for watching.